Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Putella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting with Stephen from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about how to price a mailer by land type. Well, what the heck is that? Yeah, wait a minute. What? There's rural vacant land. There's infill lots. There's commercial property. There's all kinds of subsections yeah. of stuff like uh, commodity type property like farmland. Yeah. Or land that needs to be converted to subdivisions that is farmland. We'll talk all about it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a laundry list. <laughs> like, there's a lot. I, I tried to run through it quickly just to, uh, well, I don't know why. You know what? It's so good because so many people think, oh, it's just land. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't even see. There's land that's zoned for mobiles and land. You can do this and land. There's. If you think you buy a piece of dirt and you can just put anything you want on it, you can't. That's right. And I think some people are confused by that too. Well, what do you mean? It's mine. Yeah. That there's rules though, depending on where that's it good. is. Well, you know what? Let's talk about that. Even too. the type of construction you can do, there might be rules. However, the good news is, yes, if you know what you're doing and comply with these rules, fortunes are made. Jill and I are sp- splitting ding, property ding. right now, and I urban subdivision in an urban area mm-hmm. that should have been split a long time ago uh, split a long time ago mm-hmm. and we're doing okay <laughs> before we get into the topic let's take a question posted by one of our members on the land investors online community it's free carl asks hello i've been studying for a month uh for land business and yesterday was my first time i contacted counties for the de- delinquent list i emailed them oh i'm like which email he emailed the county clerk yeah i emailed i went to the county clerk office most of the county clerk representatives told me they don't know of any list oh boy um, this is this is such good information (laughs) you're answering your question this is awesome and that maybe i need to contact each township's tax collector I, know, I can read Jill's mind right now. Uh, so my and question I, I love, is... I love what's in your mind right now. My question is, am I contacting each town or the counties? The only county I spoke to uh, said they have no list and taxes are submitted on municipal slash township level. What has me confused is everything I heard and read about this, getting a list from the counties. <laughs> Also, one county tax office told me they cannot give me that type of information and I would need to fill out an Open Republic Relations Act form. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are others need to do this? Thank you, Carl. Go ahead, Jill. Carl, <laughs> Carl, Carl. Boy, can we help you. Yeah. It's like, I'm trying to give Carl's it... Carl's clearly not a member. He's right. not a member of uh, Land Academy. And um, I... I um, I'm glad you're working on this and I'm glad you're studying on this. This is the stuff that you have to learn. There's such an easier way to do this. First of all, you need to know what you're looking for, number one. Yeah. And going just for delinquent tax properties is not what you should be looking exactly. for. Exactly. Unless you want to just do only proper properties and be done in six months and have lost a lot of money, then you should stay on and, this path. And a lot of crying. And a lot of, yeah, and a lot of tears, a lot of sweat. <laughs> Your family will disown you. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Um, that's not the that's not the right way to do this. So um, uh, let me back up. Where, do, where where would you start here? We do not advocate, nor have we ever advocated, mailing back tax delinquent property only. We've done it. We've had members come to us with tragic stories, and here's why: back tax property carries along with it a tremendous other problems. People have either passed away. Um, it's got liens against it. You're you're setting yourself up. Even if you got everything you wanted, what you just tried to do here, and you actually got a great list of X Y Z County. You got a delinquent list, and you sent the mail out. It's true. And you even sent the mail out right. You offered uh, how right we do about. it. We priced it right, which is what we're actually going to talk about here in a minute. How to price that mailer? You priced it right, and it got to the right people. Right. And they're all going to, and a, a high percentage are going to say, absolutely, I would love to sell you this piece of property for the offer that you submitted. Mm-hmm. I'm signing it and sending it back. And you're going to jump up and down and say, that's the greatest thing. It worked. Then you're going to get into it and you're going to find out the person that signed it. Oops, well, they, they signed on behalf it. of their deceased parents. Exactly. Twenty-two. They have 22 siblings. And they think and they own it, but they don't. And on and on. Or there's a medical lien. Or there's all kinds of issues with this back tax property. So right. Jill and I avoid back tax property. All the uh, very uh, with a vengeance, let's say. Yeah. So 
and we, we and we're very vocal about this on the show and we that's not what we teach right uh, it's like i don't i don't, I don't read know them where out this came from why why do you want to would you rather buy right it all comes back to this one concept picture two houses that are right next to each other and they're at the end retail they're they're both worth a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars one's fallen down and one's in great shape it needs to be updated mm-hmm. but it's great shape you would like to buy seventy thousand bucks and mark it up for a hundred thousand dollars make thirty thousand dollars on the deal mm-hmm. do you want the dilapidated one or do you want the one that's uh renovated or not renovated but tenable it's livable right. Of course you want the one that has less work, but for some reason, the world believes that they have to buy crappy property. I know. Property with problems. They, well, the reason that the person's going to... Just one second, Joe, and then you can go. The reason that people sell property is not because they don't... The reason that a person decides to sell a piece of property is not has nothing to do with the property. It has everything to do with the life situation they're in. So that person that has that great house... They're, they just they want to move somewhere. They got a new job. Uh, who knows? There's all a million reasons what things change in their life, and they're ready to move. By the way, I just read that 20 percent of the population in this country moves every year. That's staggering. And we're pff, we That's do millions it millions and millions of pro- <gasps> millions of houses. Yeah, millions. Exactly. So this is like myth number 72. You know, to really be good at real estate investing, you have to dispel all this stuff that you've learned from the 70s and 80s and 90s and and then thousands it just doesn't apply any longer it probably never applied then the big picture is um those back tax properties are usually back taxes for a reason every person who's done this let's i'm you listening here you're nodding with you're gonna nod with (laughs) me you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go yeah been there done that if you're if you're a house flipper and you've ever drive driven around and found oh a little hidden gem uh on a beautiful street that's all boarded up and it's been abandoned for a year you're like Oh, that's I scored. I'm, oh my gosh, I must have just been. I'm, I'm the only one that found it. Oh my, I can't believe it's sitting here. Driving Nobody for knows. Dollars, I can't believe they never found it. And then you got into it, and you realize, well, that's why it's been boarded up for six years. No knows. one can do anything. Nobody knows with who owns it. it. Yeah, and it's oh, it's or it's upside down. Nobody wants it. Yeah. There's 18 problems with it. Yeah. You know, and and the six mo- or eight months that you would attempt to spend to get this deal done you could have done 10 20 deals and made so yeah. much more money so so this whole back tax thing it's yeah it's the you have to it's you have to get yourself out of this um this it's a concept what you're looking for like steven just said is a situation and it's like there's, and I just discussed this with a team of people working with us on houses um, just the other day. They're hung up on the school district. And I have to remind them, they're like, oh, this is such a great buy. We should get this one because of where the school, I've heard it's a really good school district. I don't really care. The bottom line is you're looking for a situation, whatever it is. That's the concept, they number one. They sent the mailer out based on a school district? Hold on a moment. And then, and then you can't see an asset for anything other than a line item. That's my thing too. You can't get hung up on the thing. No, what they were just trying to sell me on is why we should buy this asset because it's in a good school district. We just found this out. And I'm like, I don't really care about the school district. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> no. What's going to sell this house is how well it's it. priced. And yes. we all know how we're going to come in and how fast we're going to do it. And it's going to be great. You have to look at stuff that way. What's going to sell the house is how well it's priced. Right. What, what you're going to buy it for. It has nothing to do with the house and everything to do with when they sell it to you, what's going on in their life. Right. They got a new job. Um, both of their parents were recently deceased and they inherited it. There's a million reasons yeah. why things change in life and that's it. I want to help Carl one more thing too because I'm sure... I have one more thing to say too. I'm sure this this came really directly from our online community. So if you yeah. want to read the answer, by the way, and you want to see what other people said, go into Land Investors yeah. and you'll see Carl's question. It's a real question. So... Um, so Carl, I'm sure everybody has already weighed in and yes, there is a better way. Uh, and when you're ready, I'm we sure, will help I'm you. Sure you're right. So basically we have the inside track to all the county's data. You never have to call the county anymore. You can, Carl, I don't care if it's 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. That's not where to get the data anyway. You can sit at your desk, go right into, we have, we're the licensed provider of all the the, the All three assessor aggregators. Uh-huh. Assessor so, data aggregators. Thank you. So 
basically what I was trying to say, Carl, is you can go in, download the data on your own, not have to deal with these people, and get it exactly how you want it, when you want it, because uh, unfortunately, the way you're going, when you do hit a county and you do find someone that doesn't have a brand new employee, obviously, answering the phones, who understands what you're looking for, even when you have that person on the other end, it's it's hard to make sure that they give you all the stuff that you need. You know, it's it's going to be hard for you to say, here's a list, you know, good luck keeping them on the phone. But you, you, adjust, you essentially want to say, all right, I want a list of all of the people who own property in uh, this county that are between, you know, 4.2 acres and 5.5 acres, because I'm going for that five acre niche. I want all these properties. I need all of their, uh, you know, all of the contact information. I need to know the tax information, size, legal description, assessed. Oh, and I only want it zoned this way. And I only want assessed up to this amount and, you know, this range. This person's going to go, uh huh, uh huh. And you know what I mean? They're not even, they don't, they're not going to do that. And then they're what you're going to get back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get back, of course, it's probably going to have half of the things that you asked for, and you're going to be trying to make that work. You don't want to, you don't want to go about it that way. Your time, your money, your energy is too valuable. You want to get in there, pull the data yourself, exactly what you want, download the list, scrub it to what you want, and then send out offers. Let me take it back one step further. We've, we've, Carl, we've we've made an example of you enough. Yeah, we're not picking on you, Carl. <laughs> if you send good. three thousand well placed letters out, offers unsolicited offers that are priced right, when, and you've done your research just like we teach, we teach every single step on how to do this to three thousand houses or three hundred landowners, three hundred house owners, three thousand house owners, three hundred landowners. One of them is going to be in a situation in a life situation where they sign it. And they send it back. Now, do you want to close the deal and resell it for twenty to thirty or forty thousand dollars more, or do you want to undo somebody's problem? So, stop with the back tax property and stop with the falling down houses. It's just not you're setting yourself up to fail, and that's the truth of it. It's so interesting. This is such a good topic. Um, how many people, when you take a step back? I mean, people don't believe it, but then they go, oh, yeah, of course, my parents, their house is paid for and they pay their taxes. They don't, when you really take a step back, there are a lot more people out there with fully paid for assets that are happily paying their taxes. 50%. That for some reason, there's going to be a situation when they go, you know what? Yeah. We're kind of done. They don't want to clean the basement. You know, and the kids have all moved on. Yeah. And uh, God, this house is just getting too much for us they to take care They paid $18,000 for it 40 years yeah. ago. It's worth... Uh, Eight hundred thousand, and they're happy they, to get a letter for a six. Do you think? Do you think they care <laughs> right. if it's worth eight hundred? Do you think they care that we're going to spend seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars and they can move out next weekend? True. And we're going to sell it for eight hundred. Right. That's exactly what happens. Right. Exactly. And then, and so then for this land, is so foreign. It's even people. easier. I don't know why. Mm hmm. It's the same thing. Today's topic: <laughs> How to price a mailer by land type. This is the meat of the show. Jill and I. This all week this week is frequently asked questions. Uh, I got with our person who handles uh, customer service and spent an hour with her. And we talked about in great detail questions that um, she thought the general public needed to hear from us directly. Or most of these are technical questions, but uh, later in the week there's some questions about that are more, let's call them spiritual. <laughs> is that your, <laughs> what the heck? They're not that, spiritual. They're, they what? <laughs> that's, that's Stephen's way of saying, Jill, you don't have to wear your pretty little head about this. <laughs> Listen, you know what's so funny about that? <laughs> I have to say something real quick here. Okay, number three is in high school now. Our number three kid. Yes, our number three child, not employee or life partner. <laughs> number three... <laughs> Although there might be a number three, keep it up. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just no, kidding. that's some classic stuff. <laughs> so, um, but our number three child, you guys are having a discussion about their classes, and they're talking about this. And and I don't know if even if you know that you did this, but 
everybody forgets that I was a physics pro and I love math and I can do numbers. But for some reason, because it's not the thing that I talk about very much, I don't go there very often, I don't get real deep, people kind of forget that, Oh, yeah, Jill can do math. Hello. I can do math. I know you can do All math. All right. Pilot. Well, it kind of sounded like, well, this is kind of my week, Jill. You can just kind of go over here. So, uh, but no, I, I really do like this stuff. So, thank you. I know you're smart, Jill. Thank you. Here's the deal. If, this, if you're the kind of person who takes notes for this thing, this is now's the time, and then the rest of it's going to be fun. <laughs> Here's the, a, a short list of the ta- types of land that are out there. Rural vacant land, which is what Land Academy 1.0 is all about. You know, properties that are way out there and super cheap. And the sky's the limit on what you can use them for. Uh, there, there are infill lots. So you're driving down uh, the street and you see a house, 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 vacant piece of property, and a house, and a house, and a house, usually in older subdivisions, not master plan communities. Then it gets a little bit more specific. There's commercial type property that is zoned for, let's say, industrial property um, or a, a church or a subdivision. It's zoned for residential subdivision. Maybe it's even zoned for like a playground. Um, urban planners are famous now for like pre-zoning the areas that are further out in their municipality that are undeveloped so that it's already all kind of done. And uh, it's zoned that way. And then finally, there's uh, what I call commodity type property like uh, farmland that actually has a price attached to it. Um, you know, if you ask three guys in a coffee shop in Iowa what a acre of properties, acre of farmland's going for, they're all going to say some version of 3,200, 3,300, 3,100. It's all, it, one's not going to say $30,000 an acre and one's not going to say $1,000 an acre. It's all pretty consistent. So that type of property, in my opinion, is the hardest to buy, although we have members that buy it all the time. Mm-hmm. And they just buy it for two or $300 cheaper than... Uh, they think they can sell it for per acre or they lease it. Mm-hmm. They specifically buy it at, at that commodity price and then they lease it and that's their whole thing. They just use us to figure out how to send mail offers out to the people to find a, to find a seller without using brokers and stuff, which is great. It's a great use of our program. Mm-hmm. So the real deal is, the real topic today is what, how is it different? How it, there's different ways to, to attract a seller uh, using a mail campaign. They're, very, they're diametrically different. Let's take the first one. Rural vacant land. You find a county that's relatively rural, but close to an urban area. And then you look at what's for sale uh, on the internet. Land and farm, land watch, and then you that's your sale price. That's where your starting top point. You never want to be at retail when you're all done. So we work it backwards. You take it down, I don't know, you want to be probably 50 to 60 to 70 percent of that retail top dollar because you want to sell it fast so that's your sale price and then from there you offer half Mm -hmm. this is rural vacant land why people who own rural vacant land a a very large percentage of them have no interest in owning it at all Uh, they're just waiting for somebody like you to send them a letter which no one ever does saying you know what on thursday we can uh i'm going to give you forty two hundred dollars for this property yeah yeah i know you know it's worth eight or ten 4200 is what we want to offer because we're in the business of reselling land and you have a couple of choices. You can sell it to me, get 4200 bucks on Thursday, or you can call a broker and wait six months and go and pray a lot. Mm-hmm. A, a huge percent. Every 300 letters we send out, like I said earlier, for, for that type of property, we, we buy a piece of property mm-hmm. for exactly how we want it and resell it. Infill lots are completely different. Infill lots are, the value is based on if it had a house on it, and the house was done and it was new. What? So wait a minute. You don't look at other infill lots that are available for sale in the market? No. Here's how it works. You take a look at the price per square foot of the houses that are done and for sale all on that market. Let's say it's a zip code. Let's say they're hundred grand. The universal knowledge of... If you look at a house, the, the value of a house is $100,000 or that's what it sells for. 20 20 to 25% is of that value is land. So 20 to $25,000 is what a new home builder would probably budget to build a house. And this is goes for this goes for ex- extremely pr- uh, expensive houses too. And I'm not talking about big ranches with uh, lots of acreage. I'm talking about a little infill lot that slips right into in between two existing houses. 
So great, now you've got a property that's worth $25,000 retail. That's probably what a builder would pay, maybe 20000 Now you want to come in half at that. So you want to offer maybe eight to $10,000, maybe even less. We go in on deals like that, five or 6000 bucks because they just mm-hmm. want to get rid of it. Exactly. And then we sell it for ten or fifteen to make sure our customer, the home builder, is just getting thrilled. a smoking deal and wants to come back. Uh-huh. That's how you price. And that's what Land Academy 2.0 is all about, exactly how to price that in spreadsheets and they'll give you templates and the whole thing. Commodity property we just talked about like uh, farmland, you offer pretty much what it's worth minus a few hundred dollars an acre uh, just because you want to lease it or resell it. Um, that's a whole different game. It's not a game that Jill and I choose to play, but boy, we have some uh, members who just ha- are doing great, doing great with that. It's the same concept of buying a house and renting it out. You buy a house, hopefully for less than you think it's worth, and then you rent it out and you get your, you, you, it's a long view. Same thing with farmland. Buy it for what you think it's worth now, maybe a little less, and you lease it to a farmer, hopefully an industrial farmer who who's going to pay the lease payment. And it's a long, long, long view, 30, 40 years. And then there's property where you can change the use or subdivide, like I said earlier. Uh, I, I like the, the best example of this type of property is outlying farmland in an urban area that you know and everybody knows, including the farmer, will be converted to a subdivision at some point. It's just a matter of when. And so he's biding his time. Do you ever see a Christmas tree farm? It's the same concept. They're just growing Christmas trees so that it's a tax thing. It's, they're not making any money on the Christmas trees, and chances are the farmer's not making too much on that either, but he knows the real value is in the land. That type of property, because you're changing its use, imagine buying a piece of farmland that's worth $3,200 an acre, and when it's done, all subdivide. And that same acre, you can put six or seven or eight houses on it if you're really cramming them in there. That is now worth $900,000, maybe more. If you understand the math, that type of property is really ex- exciting to buy. And it, um, it's very complicated. I would not recommend starting on that. So it, it has to do with the value of what it is. It's just like with the infill lots. It has to do with the value at the end. And you work mm-hmm. your way backwards. Exactly. And then you get it cheaper than that. Or you get it for what it's worth if you're the home builder. If you're a company like Toll Brothers or Shea Homes, these huge publicly traded companies and they live and die by doing master plan communities, big ones, you have an office building full of acquisition guys talking to farmers all day. So that's a game. If you know those acquisition guys and you can get in the middle of that, that's a game that you can win and do really well as a career. And the people who usually do that are people who have worked for these companies as acquisition people. And we have we have uh, a lot of members, not a handful of members that actually use this program for that. So my whole point is, my whole, I guess, my very lengthy point now is it's very different. How you send mailers out is very specific to the type of land. We're getting this question a lot, mm-hmm. so I figured I'd publicly address it. I love it. You know, I only have one question I'd like to add. Do you like this nail color? <laughs> yeah, Jill just did her nails. <laughs> I, I just, totally just went off. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, you've done it again. You spent another 25 minutes. 25 minutes now listening to the Land Academy <laughs> show. Join us next time where we discuss how to choose a county to send offers. And that's the first land type, rural vacant land. Love these questions and more questions. And if you have any, please go post them on our <laughs> online community. It is free and you can find it at landinvestors.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Yeah, yeah, I went off. I went off. But it, that was good. It needs to be said, you know. Don't it's you good. think? Yeah. No, these are no. I'm serious. No, I'm. 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 I just. I didn't have anything to add. You covered it perfectly. I don't know what to say. It's a great question, and I think this is actually that's one of the shows that I think people are going to go back and re-listen to. I'm going to copy the tra- copy and paste a transcript for Erin, our customer service person, so she can just put it in the FAQ. That's a great idea. That would be perfect. Because you can't switch them. Like if you apply the pricing model to a rural vacant land, it just doesn't work. And vice versa. There a lot of, I see a lot of our members, which is one of the reasons we're doing Land Academy 2.0. It's mm-hmm. all about infill lots. Applying the pricing model for rural vacant land to to uh, infill lots. And, and other little niches. And it's there kooks. Are, they are different. There's some little nuances and we can help you. Yeah. Share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you are listening. And while you're at it, please rate us there. 
We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.